Well, thank God we just looked at the weather and Lagos is going to be sunny today. We hope that is going to be the case because sometimes it's very unpredictable. But right now we're not looking at the weather. We're looking at the economic weather of uh, Nigeria. Uh, it's been said that inflation exchange rate will decline in 2014. That is according to the CBN. 2024. Well, 2024. So let's, let's look at that and see how possible that will be. Our guest this morning is Mukhtar Mohammed, who is uh, an international finance and economics analyst. He's talking to us from Lagos here. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mukhtar. Thank you so much for having me. Compliments of the season. Same to you. Same to you. Okay. Um, this is uh, CBN being the prophet of uh, good, not do, <laughs> <laughs> saying that inflation and exchange rate will decline in 2024. Do you have pointers to this effect that in 2024 uh, these things will go down? The um, inflation rate will go down and the exchange rate will also decline. Have you seen policies that will bring up, bring this about? Yeah, thank you. I, I wish I'm as optimistic as the CBI. I remember sometime the consultant for the, the presidential uh, committee, consultant on tax, said that um, in December the exchange rate would be 700, between 700 and 750, and, uh, both in the official and the parallel market. And today, it has not changed. Even it went above 1,000 in December in the official rate. So there's a saying that says, um, talk is cheap. Anyone can talk. But you need to match your talk with action. I think uh, thus far, what we've seen from the current CBN governors, uh, governor is talk. And we've not seen action match up to it. Remember before now, they were expecting 13 billion. That was the Minister of Finance told us to the CBN, 3 billion from LNPC. And they will use that to stabilize, stabilize the exchange rate. But up to this moment, that has not happened. And they were supposed to pay off some of the um, debts that the CBNs owe in the banks. By this money, they just did a payment of just 50, I mean, less than 5%. And uh, up to now, they've not continued that payment. So definitely, when you look at all that with what they are saying, you, you have cause for concern to say that you don't think this will happen. But when you talk about policies, um, about policy drives, then you, you could be optimistic a little because um, if you look at them telling you, the, the Minister of Finance said that they may be going back to the National Assembly uh, for upward review or maybe of, uh, of, of um, uh, revenue because of the performance they've seen in revenue thus far. So you could be also be excited about that. If you look at some of this policy, uh, the policy of um, floating of the Naira to attract investors, if that work in terms of liquidity coming into the the, the the foreign exchange market, definitely this rate will go down. But as it stands now, we are not seeing that. When you talk about inflation, the greatest fuel of inflation still remains the exchange rate because we import a lot of the things that we eat or we consume in this country. So if you bring down the exchange rate, definitely you also be bringing down inflation. I believe that's what he, he, he himself knows that, and I think that's what they are working at. But like I said, those are all talk. We need to see the structures to guide us towards realizing these uh, results. Yeah, before we go so, to some other specifics within the Nigerian context, we would also like to look at what we've been talking about even uh, from yesterday, about what they advise that is coming from international bodies like the IMF or the, the World Bank, Bank. At, this, uh, at this time. World Bank is telling us that we need to raise the taxes for SMEs, we need to sell fuel at 750 per litre. Uh, even in the same breath, they are telling us that uh, uh, NNPC is not transparent enough, but they're still pegging some things and we don't know what data they are using. What are your comments on uh, the advice of World Bank or all other international bodies that have been telling us things to do? Well, I think um, if you want to go and look at history, whatever World Bank have told Nigeria to do has never ended up well for us. Um, the same World Bank told us to flow the currency, they will support us with liquidity. We floated the currency, we saw our Naira move from 450 to 1,000. The World Bank has not done anything for us. so. For me, I'm not, I'm not a supporter of World Bank policy, but I'm a supporter of in-group economic policy. No economic rooms on external uh, influence or external advice. 
because we must ask the World Bank or the IMF, what are they contributing to our economy? What have they done since we flowed the currency? What have they done? So should we remove subsidy? What have they done? The other reason they told us to remove subsidy and we have done that, and they said we should caution it with um, some other effect so that the vulnerable will not be will not be uh, uh, affected. And this, the, the government is looking at, look, if, if we have to continue like this, then the vulnerable we are already having about, according to the same World Bank, already have about 140 million Nigerians that are poor, 20 million was added to the poverty level last year. And the same World Bank is telling us to keep increasing rates in an economy that is suffering from inflation, in an economy that is suffering from a lot of um, foreign exchange volatility. So I don't think um, the government should be listening to the World Bank at this moment. I think the government should do what normal economies will do, boost liquidity inflow, make sure you stabilize the exchange by boosting liquidity inflow. Then you begin to look at reducing cost of doing business. SMEs are already suffering. And the government have seen that we will not put tax on, on the already tax. Whether we are thinking of widening the tax bracket to get more Nigeria into the tax bracket. And that is the way the, the World Bank should be advising us on how to get Nigeria more into the tax bracket than telling us that because they're telling us to tax the already tax. Because as it stands now, uh, the 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 the, inf the informal sector less than ten percent of the informal sectors are paying tax. So what we have is the formal tax sector that are really paying tax. So what I expect the, the World Bank to to do for us to bring us strategy on how we can attract more Nigeria into the into the tax bracket. SMS are already suffering from supply chain disruption, from exchange rate volatility, from infrastructure decay, and yet you are saying those same people should be taxed the more. I don't think it's an um, it's a policy that I think the government should look at. On four at 750, I want to ask them what is the cost of refining of those four as it stands now? What um, has the price gone up internationally at the time we pegged it at 600 or, or 600 uh, in, in, in some areas and 500 and something in some areas? Definitely no, because the price has gone up but marginally. And they normally forget that NMPC and is working tirelessly to make sure we begin to have internal um, supply of a refined petroleum product. And if we are able to do that, whatever cost they think they must have lost in terms of bringing the price to seven from uh, to six hundred from seven fifty, they will gain when we internally begin to do our own production. And so maybe uh, NPC is looking at the long time future of the, of the petroleum sector and say, look, for now we can afford to do that. By December, protocol refinery will start. And by January, hopefully, we'll begin to refine um, petroleum products like uh, uh, PMS, but right, I mean, that is Dangote refinery. But in December, they will begin to refine other products that are even very, very important for industrialization, like diesel, aviation fuel, and others. So I, I don't think they, they flood, they've gone too far away from what they plan to do. But I am not a supporter of World Bank policy, especially when it In those, in those things. Okay, so a major player in this if inflation um, saga that we're going through is fuel. And since the fuel subsidy has been removed, obviously you've seen um, the spike in the high cost of transportation, even food, um, because a lot of people um, rely on this product. Now, with this, um, with fuel being so expensive, how can we now say, okay, we need policies that would actually reduce the inflation? Because inflation is about 27%, however, but food, is, food inflation is about 30%. And since it's dependent on this fuel subsidy being gone, how do we reduce that? How does this inflation start to decline? And, and then, obviously, we're talking about the exchange rate as well. How, what are the things? What are the things we can actually do to ensure the decline in 2024? Let me start with um, food inflation. Um, food inflation, you, you shouldn't forget that we still have the challenge of insecurity in the northeast, north central, banditry, and um, terrorism. So that also is hampering um, production. We must also forget about the farmers' enhancement crisis in Benue State, which happened to be the food basket of Nigeria. A lot of farmers have still not gone back to their farm. There's still crisis there, even if it's not in the news like it used to be. That also is reducing demand, I mean, reducing supply in the market. Now you talk about roads. Roads, the roads, the roads also are not very good. 
selling food in rural areas to move their goods, so that also improve that also cost cost of production to go high. It's not just the fuel that costs it to go high, and also most of these comp uh, 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 vehicles that we use or the machines that we use for production in terms of food processing. They are not manufactured yet, they are manufactured abroad, so that's where the exchange rate volatility comes in. So if you look at, uh, like I said, if you look at all the challenges Nigeria is facing, you realize that there's always this exchange rate that is there because the cars spare part are not produced here, you have to buy them abroad. So when those cars break down, they have to search for FX and fix those cars, and all that we combine into the cost of transportation. So yes, uh, food inflation, it's a challenge, but food inflation is fueled by transportation. Transportation is not just fueled only by increment in fuel price, but increment also in the product, in the purchasing of some of these spare parts of these vehicles when they go down. So that also is a major challenge. But fuel subsidy removal, yes, is, is a major fact. And what the government needs to do is to begin to see how they can intervene. Not the type of direct intervention we, we saw before, but structural intervention. When we talk about structural intervention, we're talking about what are the end use product of farming agriculture? How are we going to bring those? Um, um, government can intervene in terms of subsidy for agriculture. Is it in the area of providing of fertilizer? Is it in the area of um, electricity, either by solar system to this rural area so that we have more time to do more production and others? And then, most importantly, security. So those are for the agricultural sector. That's what I think government should do. And also begin to think of giving farmers soft loan through the commercial bank. I'm happy that CBN has finally said they will, they, they will not give loan to anybody because they don't have the, they don't have the, 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 the modality to, to, to get back those loans. So they will move through commercial banks, even if they are going to exchange um, and intervene to commercial bank, which I think is very good. They could come up with the agricultural loan that we've seen before and then begin to test commercial bank to loan it to these farmers on a single rate. But we strict monitoring to make sure that they are giving to those that are really farmers, not politicians. That will drive down costs. Then for the exchange rates, we need to attract inflow. And there are, there are, there are four major ways that we attract inflow in Nigeria. We attract inflow by direct foreign investment. We attract inflow by portfolio investment. We attract inflow by... Uh, by uh, uh, remittance from Nigeria in the diaspora, and we attract info by the sale of our crude oil and also other trades, uh, non-agricultural trade, which in terms of inflow effects is still far, far away from what we get in the in the petroleum sector. So what the government has said that next year we have a production level of 1.78 million barrel per day. Remember in 2023, we're looking at 1.38 million barrel per day. We couldn't even achieve that, but they've hiked the barrier, but they are, the, the security has improved, and so we will have to keep an eye on that, make sure we maintain, we are able to maintain that 1.7 million barrier per day. That will attract a lot of inflow. And not to forget again, now we have the private refinery like Dangote also will be exporting refined petroleum products out of this country. We are tracking inflow that also will help us attract more dollar into our economy. Nigeria and the diaspora, they are just settling down, but because of the volatility of the exchange rate, a lot of them still go through. Um, other parties rather than before that they have to remit through the banks and the banks give people through the normal exchanges. So a lot of them are remitting through the, the parallel market. And so that is not uh, attracting the kind of inflow to drop down the, 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 the exchange rate. I think that government will need to work on that. Portfolio investors are not, the only way government can work on that, sorry, is to make sure there is stability in that space that both the parallel and the official uh, uh, power. And the only way you can do that is to attract liquidity into the system. Now, you look at the other aspect again, which happened to be uh, foreign direct investment. Throughout the eight years of President Buhari, foreign direct investment keep moves diving to till at the point they were non existent. So we need to begin to track foreign direct investment. And the only way you can track foreign direct investment is first of all come up with microeconomic stability. And that will also go down back to the exchange rate. Portfolio investors, the same thing. If you want to attract them, our equity market has been driven largely by local, which is very, very exciting for me, which is, makes it very uh, uh, good for me. I was wish that um, most of the sector of our economy is being driven by locals. You can see the kind of bullish run we've seen in the market because there's no panic in terms of remitting your phone to the, or, or to various countries because you think there's an external problem, election is coming, there is mandatory in the northeast, even if it does not affect Lagos. So all those things are there. You saw the market uh, enjoying local patronage and seeing the movements. But again, the market cannot be an isolation. It must be a global player. So you want to attract 
portfolio investors, then you must create that, go back again, you must create that exchange rate stability for, for, for portfolio investors to come in. Because if they have to come in at a rate, they make sure that it is stable so that when they make profit, they could be, uh, they could be exiting in that rate also. So those are the challenges that are. And also, for us in 2024, what I expect the, first, uh, the, the CBN to do is to make sure that they clear up all backlog, especially in the aviation sector. If you clear that backlog, you attract liquidity into the system, you attract more foreign uh, airlines into the system. Now, basically, Nigerians are the highest, uh, they pay higher coaches than any other country in Africa. So, but if you clear up that, that rate will come down, and then most of these airlines no more collect fees in Naira. They always say, no, oh, they make it in such a way that the dollar is cheaper than the Naira. So, you have no option than to sort for the, for the dollar, mm. make it cheaper for you. So, all this will be addressed if the CBN attract liquidity into the system and create stability in the city. That, for me, would be what they should think about throughout 2024. And if they do that, automatically, inflation will come down. You see, Ghana was in a height about about 30-something percent in terms of inflation. Today, they are doing, they are doing about 20, 23 to 20, 23 percent because what they just did was to um, fight their exchange volatility when government intervened in key sector of their economy, and today the inflation kept going down in Ghana. Okay, well, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's something about 2024, which means uh, we've not heard the last of it. Like you said, we'll be watching, and possibly we'll add, be praying as well, that things will work out well for us, because mm -hmm. otherwise it will really be a tough year, 2024. We'd like to thank you, Mukhtar, for coming on the show this morning. My pleasure for having me. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, that was Mukhtar Mohammed, International Finance and Economics Analyst, uh, talking to us from Lagos State here. We'll take a short break and when we return, the second hot topic will be on the stairs.